Hello there, and welcome back. My name is Sean Reimer, I don't rhyme, and I went to a theater camp in 2016 to study in the Heights, having never heard of Lin-Manuel Miranda, and I instantly fell in love with his work and style. So naturally, I was eagerly anticipating the film adaptation, especially after not being able to see a movie in theaters for a year and a half. And it's safe to say that it was well worth the wait. There's a lot I wish I could talk about within the Heights. Here are the highlights. The directing is the most creative and fantastical I've seen in years. The music is... For perspective, I knew every song from my theater camp experience and I was still entranced. By contrast, my girlfriend, who hates musicals and had never heard the music, had 96,000 stuck in her head. The music utilizes Dolby Movie Theater audio so well, and speaking of movie theaters, it was the perfect way to go to one again. There's so much I'm forgetting, but I want to focus on how this movie gave those who didn't have a voice before a pretty damn powerful one. But first, you guys should know the plot. Watch the fucking movie, but fine, I'll tell ya. In the Heights is about dreams. It centers around a group of people living in Washington Heights in New York all trying to make their Swinito happen. Among these characters are Usnavi, a bodega owner hanging on to memories of the Dominican Republic while having a crush on Vanessa, a fashion designer who helps him realize that his dream was in the barrio all along. There's also Nina, a gifted student who drops out of Stanford so her dad doesn't have to sell their business for tuition fees, while also being racially targeted multiple times in college. With the help of her dad's employee and her boyfriend, Benny, Nina learns that she can use her education to help undocumented folks succeed in America. This is honestly the Sparknotes version of the plot. My summary really isn't doing the movie justice, and there's no dull character in this movie. Even the snow cone guy is hilarious for fuck's sake, as he's portrayed by Lynn himself. My favorite part about In the Heights, though, is a line that I don't believe is in the original play. While Usnavi is talking to his kids, he tells them that from an early age, you're told that if you just work hard, get good grades, and find a good job, then everything will work out. He admits to them that life doesn't work like that. In the Heights presents a world that is ugly, and distinctly different from musical theater before it, or since. Every character has a struggle, whether it's Usnavi's feeling of home, Nina's feeling of disappointment, Sunny's struggle of trying to make a difference while not being able to go to college, the salon ladies moving, Vanessa moving, or Abuela's heartfelt number about patience and faith getting her through what she thought would be a better life. These characters aren't in an elaborate, fantastical retelling of history, or in a very niche setting. They're in Washington Heights, the barrio, and you feel it. The only time they manage to escape is when they sing. And you feel their heart explode when they do, because unlike shows where actors have limited direct parallels, the actors in this show, and I'd argue the entire crew involved in this production, are telling their story along with the characters. Being an actor in particular is a labor of love, and I put emphasis on the labor. You have to drop everything for auditions for sides you're lucky to receive 24 hours before. You can act your ass off during those auditions only to have the casting director say you have a nose that's too big. You deal with rejection upon rejection, either from agents, casting directors, family, or, most likely, all of them. You spend more money on classes to keep the skills sharpened than food, and people wonder why I'm so skinny. Simply put, it's a hard knock life. And this is from a cisgender Caucasian male perspective. Now factor in all the discrimination people who aren't privileged face. Racism, sexism, homophobia. Everyone in this movie are bleeding their roles because they've lived them. Movies like this that celebrate diversity are rare, as the industry is so whitewashed and misogynistic still. But we're getting there. I hope this movie is a turning point. Because if we continue to ignore these incredible voices, we're ignoring what makes art incredible as a whole. Through all the mass assimilation, we lose cultures, languages, expressions, and ideas. We lose what can motivate others to succeed. We miss important stories and memories. We lose experiences, 
lessons, and morals to the bigoted, entitled, and privileged. We miss beauty, talent, and love. We must do better. And I know this movie drives that point home. On that thunderful note, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.